What is up guys, welcome back to another Diablo 2 Resurrected modding tutorial. In today's video we're going to have a look at new runes and rune words in Diablo 2. Now a few of you requested this in the comments of my previous videos, so I thought that it would make a good topic for today's video. Now some parts of this video build off previous videos, so I'll link any relevant videos up here. And as always, all the files that we're working with today can be found in the GitHub link in the description below. So we'll start out in the Diablo 2 resurrected directory, we'll go into mods and create a new folder. So I've created a runes folder here and then a runes.mpq folder in that. And if you don't know why we have this runes.mpq folder, check out my earlier videos. In our folder, we have our modinfo.json as always. And in our modinfo.json, we just have name and save path set to runes, which is the mod name. So to start out, we have our data global Excel directory. And here we have our gems file. And this controls the properties for our new runes that we're going to create. We have the misc file which allows us to actually add new runes to the game. We have the runes.txt, which handles all the rune words, and that's where we'll create our new rune word from our new runes. And then we have the treasure class X file, which just allows us to set the quill rats to drop the runes that we made. And we have the weapons.txt, where I just edited some of the starting weapons to have three sockets so that we can create our rune word. Now, back in the data directory, we have HD items and items.json, and this is where we can set the graphics for our new runes. And then finally, we have data, local, language, strings, and strings legacy. And this is where we set up the names and the text that will be shown for our new runes and our new rune word. So let's jump right in. We're gonna start out with the misc.txt so that we can create our new runes. Here we are. I've added the Foos, Ro, and Da runes. So I started out by copying the L rune and just pasting it in three times to get our bases for the Foos, Ro, and Da runes. I then changed the name in the name column. I came across, I changed the required level to one because remember, we want our level one character starting out to be able to use these runes. I adjusted the cost down to 50 because I added them to Akara's inventory. I changed the code and the alternate graphics and name strings. So all of these we chose or 50, 51 and 52. So I think original runes go up to or 33. So we just chose some item codes after that, which we know aren't used. And you can see here, I did actually copy it from the L rune because the inventory file is set to inventory L. Now this isn't important for the HD graphics, so we can just ignore it. And now there isn't much else that's changed, except we set Akara to be able to sell this rune. So you can see Akara min is one and max is two. So she'll sell between one and two of each of these runes and she'll sell them for 50 gold. So they're nice and easy to pick up. So as always, the most important thing to remember is our codes here. So or 50 or 51 and or 52. These are the codes we'll have to reference in other files. Now we'll move on to the gems.txt. If you remember in the previous file, we created the runes, but we didn't actually create any effects that the runes would have. So here we have our Foos, Ro, and Da runes, and we have this letter column. Now this is interesting because it's not something we've seen before. So when we have a rune in our inventory, so for example, the Zod rune, it's actually called the Zod rune. But when we add it into an item and socket it into that item, the item gets a little word added to it, like Zod. And that's what this letter column controls. Now we'll go over it a bit more later when we're actually defining the strings. But just remember we have the code for the rune and a large L afterwards. So we just need to define this string later. So this file is actually very simple. We have our name, which is Foos, Ro, and Da. We have our letter, which we've already gone over. We have the transform column, which just controls the color of the item when we socket the rune into it. We have our code, which is or 50, 51, and 52. Now remember, that's what we defined in the misc.txt. And then we have our weapon mods, our helm mods, and our shield mods. And what these are are the actual properties that we'll be adding to the item when we socket the rune. So I've been very boring here and just chose strength, dex, and vitality for our three runes, and they'll add a flat 10. 
and that's the same for weapons, helmets and shields. So that's all we have to do in this file. Now we move on to the runes.txt and this has all the rune words that are available in Diablo 2 Resurrected. But what's very interesting is that it actually goes up to rune word 170 but you can see a lot of these rune words aren't actually implemented. Some are but basically the only ones that you can use in game have this complete column set to 1. And you can see some of the rune words, for example, plague here is applied to any weapon. It uses the cham, fal, and um runes and adds things like damage to demons, a skill cast on getting hit, as well as some other properties. But because this doesn't have complete set to 1, we can't use this in game. So a nice idea for a mod might be to actually go through this file and implement all the different rune words. But let's get back to our own rune word first. So we've added rune word 250. Now remember this as well, we'll need to use this to define the string for the name of the rune word. And we've called it the dragonborn rune word because you know, Fusro da. Now this column isn't actually used, it's our strings file later that is the important column. This is only for our own reference. And we've said the rune word is complete. It's applied to any melee weapon. It uses the Fusro Da runes. Now remember, this has an asterisk in front of it, so this column isn't important, it's only for our own reference. And we're saying it uses rune 50, 51, and 52, so those are the three runes. And then we have a bunch of properties. So we've set no freeze, we've got knockback, we have an on hit tornado. Um, so it's a 50% chance to cast a level 10 tornado when I hit an enemy. We have resist cold, ignore AC, uh, no heal on the enemies when hit. So you may be wondering how I know the names of all these properties, what parameters they take, what these fields actually mean. And it's actually dead simple. All of this is kept in the properties.txt. And now you can see the properties.txt here. There's things like armor class, all the properties that you can actually set here. And if we scroll over to the far side, you can see the tooltip, which explains what these do. And then we have details on what the parameter column does, what the min and max column does, and any notes on this particular property. So if we go down to hit skill, which is one of the properties we're using to cast tornado when we hit an enemy, we can come across here, we can see the tooltip says percentage chance to cast a level whatever skill on striking. The first parameter is the actual skill. The second is the percentage chance of casting that. And the third is the actual skill level of the skill that we cast. So back in the runes.txt, we've added all the properties that we want for this rune word and we are done here. So we'll now move on to the HD items items.json. Now this file controls the linking to all the different assets that we use and we're just going to cheat here and reuse the ja, cam and zod runes. So you can see here I have my item code for my new runes or 50 or 51 or 52 and they just point at ja, cam and zod. So we could actually change the inventory graphics for these new runes but I've covered that in a previous video so do check that out if you're interested in how to do that. But for now, we've just defined our new runes here and pointed them towards existing graphics. And that's it for the items.json. Now we move on to our data, local, language, strings and strings legacy files. So our item runes in both of these folders. So we come down to the last entry, which was 20,675. And we're just going to pick an ID way above that. So here I've picked 80,000 to start my new runes app. And we simply add in our key and all the translations for this new item. So simply copy an existing uh, entry for some other item and change it to match your item. So the key is that item code, which is OR50, OR51 and OR52. And here we have Fus rune, but remember, we also had an or 50 l column. And that's another thing that we'll have to define. So we've 80,000 is the actual rune name, 80,001 
is our capital L. Um, so that is just Fus. We've basically just omitted the rune part. And then 80,002 is Rho. So again, or 51, or 51L. Then we have or 52, or 52L. And then we have our rune word 250, which was from the runes.txt. And that's just dragonborn for our rune word name. And we essentially do the exact same in the strings legacy file. So this is just when you toggle back to legacy graphics, these are the actual strings that are displayed. So we've just added our runes in here again. So we have foos, foos, ro, da, dragonborn. Nice and simple. And that's it. That's our new rune word created with new runes. So let's try it out. Now remember, we come to game settings, we want to modify the command line arguments with dash mod, the name of our mod, which is runes, dash text, make sure that's all in there, and play the game. And of course, we still have server queues, and we have our character here, the Bored Nord. Now I actually prepared this character earlier because we needed a three socket weapon to actually use our rune word, so I prepared that already. You can see here we have our short sword with three sockets and then we have our foos, ro and da runes. And if you remember we set them to plus 10 strength, dexterity and vitality. So let's create our rune word. We'll socket in the foos and you can see there it says foos but not foos rune. So that's that 450 L string is just foos. And likewise with ro and then once we socket that, we should have our rune word. And there it is. You can see our dragonborn rune word, 50% chance to cast the level 10 tornado, ignore target defense, prevent heal, knock back, and then our plus 10 to all, uh, to strength, dexterity, and vitality. And our cold resist, of course. So let's actually test this out on some unsuspecting monsters. So Mr. Zombie here, there we go, there's our tornado, our knockback. So we can see our properties are actually working. So that's it for me today, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope it inspired you to go create some of your own rune words or actually just implement the rune words that Blizzard left there on the cutting room floor. It's a great idea for a nice, simple mod to get you more familiar with the process. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future videos, leave me a comment down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.